So I've been really depressed the last like two weeks, week ish. I haven't really, I mean, basically my brain's very foggy right now. So I might not be making much sense. I might not be as quick on the ball as are you, you know, you know me. I'm known for my quick, sharp, sharp tongued wit, wit, you know. I am the sharpest tool in the shed. That's what I'm known for, right? My, um, my ineffable wit. Uh, yeah. So, for maybe three years, two years, from, from maybe 2015, 2016, I was obsessed with cyberpunk, the genre, not the game that didn't exist yet but um so I was a punk for a while right um by that I mean you know I had a mohawk I had the big leather jacket with all the band patches on it I used to go to underground punk shows or let's say underground just like small venues pubs and stuff pretty regularly I used to mostly listen to like Mind Threat, Bad Brains type stuff. Like, that would be most of what I listened to. Um, yeah, all the general punk stuff that one does when you're a punk. Um, and I was really obsessed with the idea of, like, punk. I wanted something in punk that felt new. Something that wasn't just not that I knew what this was at the time, but something that wasn't like hauntological, something that like I wanted something a new version of punk that didn't feel like something straight from the fucking seventies and eighties just recreated now. You know, I wanted some I want and so well clearly we have now computer computer punk cyberpunk. And so, you know, I I I did all what you need to do. I read Neuromancer, I um, watched Lane and all the cyberpunk shit that you've all seen, fucking Blade Runner and all that. I said Blade Runner was my favourite film. Blade Runner was never my favourite film, I just said it was. Um, and I was super into the idea of like bringing cyberpunk, I made cyberpunk music, I made what I thought cyberpunk music would sound like, that's what volume 2 is basically. Um, I was just really into it and most importantly I spent a lot of time on Lane Chan I, I like Lane Chan was my main hangout space at that point uh, and uh, now cyberpunk is just not even anywhere in my mind like I think you can notice it from looking at my videos especially if you're a long time viewer you, yeah, I used to talk about it a lot and then Denpa, I just sort of made a big deal about how it's just dumb and doesn't work anymore. And I wanted to explore that more. Like, what actually what was the what was the appeal of cyberpunk? Like, why why did it matter? You know, why why did I feel so drawn to it? Why do so many people feel so drawn to it? I mean, the game cyberpunk it sold massively despite being, you know, buggy, or whatever, I personally, I'm not going to go, in. this is not about the video game, okay, um, but yeah, let's talk about the cyberpunk, why, well, what, why, why, you know, let's just talk about it, um, so I have some notes here, so cyberpunk speaks to a desire for changing things without change, you know, cyberpunk is at its heart, it was at uh, first at least a genre of fiction, right? It still kind of, it still basically is. And uh, it's a genre of fiction about, it's sort of like very related to noir, you know, Blade Runner is a noir story. It's very much detective type of stories. Ghost in the Shell is kind of a bit of a detective story. Lane is a bit of a detective story. Um... But it's also punk, like it's about being kind of like a underground rebel fight in the system run by corporations and stuff. 
but here's something interesting that you'll find when you talk to people who are into cyberpunk, including me, is they're constantly trying to be in a cyberpunk world. But that doesn't make any sense, if you actually think about it. Because cyberpunk is supposed to be dystopian fiction. It's supposed to be, like, oh, like, oh, like the world, like most cyber, so I'm just turning the volume down a bit, hopefully it's not too loud now. Most cyberpunk is set, like, in a nuclear wasteland with one, like, that's what Judge Dredd is, right? It's like a nuclear wasteland with one city that's still alive. Like, that's pretty common. It's supposed to be a dystopia, so why do people who are into cyberpunk want to live there so bad? If it's so shit, if it's a world controlled by corporations. Where crime is rampant and, you know, whatever. Police will just kill you. Wow, sounds, a, sounds, sounds like the real world. Well, that's because I say cyberpunk is actually utopian fiction. You know, Blade Runner, they got fucking flying cars and shit. And general AI. In the sequel, at least. But, like, bioengineered replicants and shit. Uh, it's the idea that, like, you can be someone fighting the system, but you don't actually have to fight a system. Like, you can just be fighting the system forever. You don't have to ever com like commit to actually destroying it. You just have to fight it forever, and that's a, that's a good thing actually. Like, it's um, you you you're you um you you want to be the guy rebelling against the system, but you don't want to have to care about fucking replacing it or anything. That shit's boring and shit. You know, you you just want to be the guy rebelling. You don't want to be sitting around a fucking table deciding how to fucking allocate water supplies or whatever you want to be fighting governments and corporations and shit but yeah well i'll talk about that i'll talk about the, some of the utopian technology stuff of cyberpunk in a minute but like uh it's much cooler to be fighting a system it's much more engaging in a storytelling so again, as a, as a genre of fiction, who fucking cares about a story where a bunch of people sit around a table debating how to reform society? That sounds like shit. Only tankies would read that. You want to be the guy. You want to read a fucking story about a guy who's taken down corporations. That's interesting. And narratives. You know, every the world is just a series of narratives you tell yourself, basically. Like your perception of the world is just a narrative you tell yourself. So that's a if you have a powerful narrative like that in cyberpunk, then that's a powerful narrative in ideology as well. Um, and that's not to say it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, I think the immediate conclusion you would jump to is haha that's just silly the world can't just be that you know you need no but like this clearly appeals to people for a reason right so if the point of a you know an ideology is to give you a guiding world view or whatever then pick apart the parts of cyberpunk that give you a satisfying guiding world view and loot them for your own ideology or whatever, worldview, however you want to call it. So it's like it's like post left anarchism, you know, it's it's not it's not like fucking left coms or what do they call themselves? Communalists or um syndicalists where it's like oh oh anarchy isn't all that stuff. It's it's when everyone sits around and has a meeting and votes. Like, no, shut the fuck up, bitch. No, no. See, this is just a utopianism, right? It's the same as, you know, recently I've been really into the idea of capitalism, like, framing capitalism as a utopian ideology, or which it really is, but we don't think of it that way. Like, all of the things that, that capitalists say about communism, like, 
oh, the, like, uh, oh, it works well in theory, but not in practice. Like, that also applies to capitalism, too. I'm not saying it doesn't necessarily apply to communism. I'm not a commie. I'm not a goddamn red. You know, it's the same thing. It's also a utopian worldview. I'm, like, you know, the idea, oh, capitalism's great, you know, everyone just works, and whoever works the hardest and, you know, try, well, tries the best, it's like a meritocracy. They win, they come out on top, and then they have their money, and they can, you know, the, the trickles down and helps everyone. It's great. But obviously, that's not how it works in real life, but, you know, on paper, it looks great. It's a utopian system. It could never work. Same in communism, you know? Like, oh, the government will just wither away. Or, like, oh, you know, we'll just have a revolution, and then, bam, it's done. It will just stay communist forever. That sort of thing. Or, like, oh, we have an anarchist system with no government, and, like, uh, or whatever and it's like oh well one guy decides that he wants to be a fascist and now there's a bunch of fascists look, rising up but whoops we accidentally destroyed all of the systems that normally would be used to suppress counter-revolutionaries in any other sort of communism whoops or the other way around oh whoops the systems we used to oppress counter-revolutionaries accidentally gained too much power and now control the government and we have a fucking dictatorship whoops whatever i didn't mean to go on a rant about that see I, my brain's all foggy i don't know where my ideas are but uh it's none of that basically it's more like a post-left thing it's not about outcomes it's about actions it's a anarchy is a process um jo, uh, is it joissons Something like that. Like, in cyberpunk media, even in its own non-clarity, it's clear who's oppressing you, right? Like, you know the corporations are the ones oppressing you, and there's no such thing as a good corporation. So you know who you're fighting against, it's very obvious. And it's almost like they've created a little gap for you, you know? Because obviously you're the protagonist, so you're going to be able to win, or at least fight. You're going to be able to at least fight, even if you don't win, you're going to fight. That's better than we can do. That's that's why cyberpunk is a utopian fiction genre, because it's, you know, you're allowed to fight, which is not the case in real capitalism, in mo like modern capitalism. Um, neoliberal capitalism, I guess, or whatever. Um, yeah, in real life, you might not even know who's oppressing you. Like, you might be oppressing yourself through ideology, through propaganda, whatever. You might be, your brain might be full of spooks and you don't even realize it. My brain might be full of spooks and I don't realize it. And that's why I'm saying communism bad. Or whatever, you know. Or maybe the other way around, maybe it's the commies that spooked me and actually I should be fighting for the future of the white race as a Eastern European Jew. <laughs> um, <clears throat> cyberpunk, even though it's like an overwhelming oppressive force, it's clear who it is. And you're allowed to fight. And that, um, you know, it's an appealing, it's, it's appealing. It's actually like a nice vision to be allowed to fight back and to be someone who is actually making it like some sort of tangible effect on the world because most people make zero tangible effect on the world. Um, you know, if you're fucking Johnny Silverhand and you blow up a corpo building, then bam, you fucking blow up a corpo building, and that's a corpo that can't do anything anymore. Doesn't matter if you're fucking reforming the government. This is not about fucking free healthcare, is it? It's a completely different thing. It shouldn't even be count counted in the same ballpark as as that, you know. Uh, 
and it's you know the cities the cyberpunk cities they reflect something about real cities which is that like the cities themselves the architecture the civil design it's oppressive in itself you know cyberpunk has these big skyscrapers everything's like packed in super tight and super tall and big and oppressive and neon colored bright stimulating you know um and that kind of reflects how cities are in real life it's a it's a it's a i think a well, especially if you look at the original cyberpunk, William Gibson, Neil Mansa and, and all that stuff, you know, Mona Lisa Overdrive, whatever. All of that, do you know where William Gibson got his ideas? <laughs> when he describes the walking down the street in the cyberpunk books, it's just Tokyo in the fucking 90s or 80s or whatever. Like, it, it's just Tokyo. It's just what Tokyo looked like in the 80s. It's it's not even like a fictionalized version besides, you know, in Cyberpunk they may have flying cars or holograms or whatever, but it's pretty much just Tokyo from the 80s. Um, it just looked like that. It still kind of just looks like that in certain places. Um, uh, and I think that reflects something that, that like, why would it anyone want to live in a cyberpunk city you know like it's 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 full of these huge everyone's like crammed together the people pissing in the streets and prostitutes and you know well maybe the prostitutes are a good thing but um, you know it's obvious filth ridden city and it reflects this thing that cities aren't really built for humans especially in america like, I have American friends, and I'm constantly surprised when my American friends will be like, oh, I don't have any food in the house. And I'm like, well, just go to the shop. And they're like, well, I'm not going to walk for an hour. What? Well, you know, you'd have to, if, I, if I wanted to go to the shop, it's, I have to drive there. For me, if I want to go to the shop, I walk three minutes to the shop and I have food. And if I if something's not there, I walk another one minute to the bigger shop that's just there. And that's how London is, because London's been around long before cars. Um, and a lot of European cities are like that, especially Paris. Um, Paris, pretty much great for walking. And if I need to go somewhere across the city. Well, I get on a bus and I get on a train or whatever, you know? It's not a problem. In America, it's, that's not the case. Firstly, most cities don't have um, functional public transport at all. And if you don't have a car, uh, everything is just designed to be driven to. So, you you know, you have to... It's just not practical. It's not built for human beings. It's built for cars and um, companies and whatever. Um so this is the idea that like cities aren't built for humans so why would you want to live in a cartoonified even worse version of that in cyberpunk a city that is actively hostile against you well i've spent this long setting setting it up uh, about how this is a negative thing well let's actually sit back and consider this yeah well you know the world isn't built for humans you think before cities everything was just fucking hunky-dory you think in a fucking pre-industrial civilization they didn't have problems with fucking, you know, wild animals and fires and whatever, what have you, all sorts of shit? The world isn't built for humans. You're not the fuck. we're not the main characters. We live in some crazy fucking fantasy delusion that we control everything. Cities are a fucking emergent phenomenon. You know, they're not built by one person normally. Again, except for Paris, which will pretty much was built by the French army, which is why it's so good to walk around, because it was built so that the military could easily march around it. Um, but, you know, I say, like, you know, th 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 this stuff isn't for, it's it's not designed, it really, it's just emergent, like trees or whatever. You don't, go, uh, you don't complain that a forest isn't built for humans, it's the same thing, it's just nature. I, I said it before. There's, there's no actual reason why a skyscraper is any less natural than a red redwood 
forest big fir tree you know like they're they're basically the same thing uh it's and having an environment that doesn't make it it's it's again it's about the breaking down of the spectacle see like we live in in the in the real world in the non-cyberpunk fictionalized world it's fictionalized like we're supposed to believe that the cities are built that the places we live are not hostile towards us all you have to do is look at homeless spikes and you know anti-homeless design to see how not true that is um but in cyberpunk there is no illusion that the city is there to help you you know it's there it's actively hostile towards you the design the people the um, like structural entities like corporations and stuff are actively not trying to help you they're out for themselves and they don't pretend they're not whereas in the real world they pretend they're not and it's another thing of like um being able to clearly see your ideological enemies having being a, being allowed to fight i don't think people would really say that's what they think but people don't really know what they want think if there's one thing i mean i haven't really read any any psychoanalysis stuff but even i know psychoanalysis tells us that people say they want things but they actually want different things you know people say they want to live in a utopia i wouldn't want to live in a fucking utopia even if i lived in a communist capitalist whatever utopia if i lived in an ancap utopia let's say that it, it was possible let's say it was possible and there was an ancap utopia I think I still wouldn't be fucking fighting it, even if it was uto an actual utopia, you still think I wouldn't be rebelling. In a communist utopia, I would still be rebelling. I don't care what you call it, I'm not getting a fucking job, you know? Um, and I think that's the case for most people. I think that's the case for, you know, people who say they w want certain political system, like a utopian anarchy or communism or whatever in some cases it's it's true they want the, the actual material stuff that would help them like healthcare and education and you know food <laughs> shelter that's one thing but i think when it comes to the wider sort of structural reform and the uh you know stuff like fighting alienation stuff like that i think they say they want it but i don't know I don't know if they actually want it. I think they want to fight it, but I don't think they want to change it. I think that's, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, that's the thing that uh, people see that as a negative. But uh, if that's what, you know, if it wasn't, if it didn't feel good to do, if it wasn't a, a fulfilling activity, no one would have a drive to do it. People have a drive to do it for a reason. I think it's a fundamental part of, um, being alive uh, it's like open world games you know people in open world games they're always like pe people are always pressuring like game oh we want more freedom or whatever you know we want player choice but games that actually do that aside from rare cases like breath of the wild or something most open world games are shit most of the games that people really love most of the really like classic highly regarded games on open world they're very linear in fact most most great games are a designed experience and i think even though people say they want to be able to go anywhere and do anything what they really want is a guided handcrafted um experience you know with a good difficulty curve and stuff like that uh, actual encounter design not just an open world there's a few cases where it's different but those cases are outliers the minecraft and breath of the wild are the ones that and maybe gta 5 are the ones that start, like come to mind um but again those are three games out of hundreds of thousands or whatever um so back to the sort of cyberpunk's utopian premise of being allowed to rebel um, uh, I think the maybe the place where it, it climbs, shines most clearly with regards to parallels in the real world is with cyberpunk's views of technology 
I read a great, a great, um, it's, I think it might even still be going. I, I stopped reading it after a while because it, it kind of got bad, but, um, or I don't know if it got bad or I just got bored waiting for it to update. I don't remember. Um, there was a great webcomic called Drugs and Wires. Probably still up. You can find it. I think the website was drugsandwires.fail. Um, and it's a great web webcomic about, you know, Sab being in the this guy who's like a, a drug addict in the cyberpunk dystopia. And um, one of the things that's interesting is that it is its portrayal of uh, like BCI's uh, brain computer interfaces. Like it's like a, a, it's basically a junkie thing. The only people who really don't care about their health and just want to get a, a high would make a brain computer interface so they can escape reality. The same sort of people who would want to escape reality from drugs would also be the people who would be early adopters of dangerous brain computer interface technology and they have like these ports in their head which look really cool. Um, like they, will have, they have to shave a side of their hair so they can have this port. It's clever. It's cool. Um, and uh, that is really cool. Like you, when you hear that you're like wow that's so cool. But that's like, you know, how is that dy dystopian? Because in the real world, the ones who are getting brain computer interfaces are going to be the mega rich, first of all. It's going to be Elon Musk, Neuralink, whatever. It's going to be, well, first it's going to be people who are ill and like need assistance or whatever. But um, th this is the thing, is that you're not authorized virtual reality is another great example um in cyberpunk everyone has this sort of down and dirty virtual reality stuff even the earliest cyberpunk romance or whatever sort of down and dirty virtual reality stuff in real life you've got stuff like the oculus quest where you you literally cannot use the device without a facebook account the device is not functional without a facebook account and if your Facebook account gets banned, uh, your device bricks itself, the device that you paid for. So you don't really even own it. Um, this is the actual reality we live in, is that, you know, no matter what computer you have, even if it's my nice X220 or liberbooted X200 or whatever, you know, guess what? Guess what lives in there? The Intel management engine. They still have access to a backdoor to your system on the hardware level. 99% of people use Windows or Mac OS. Only a small percentage of people use Linux. Again, even if you do use Linux, most people use stuff like um, Ubuntu, which isn't fully free. There's, and even if you're using Linux, you have a you might be using a non-free web browser or browsing the web with a non-free JavaScript. Browser fingerprinting all this sort of stuff right there's no actual space for rebellion because the companies that make this technology they read cyberpunk and they said well we won't make that mistake we won't make the mistake of allowing people to use our technology freely um and so you can't um that so just doesn't happen in real life you you know in cyberpunk it's like oh you have your cyber deck that you carry around with you and you do all sorts of crazy hacking shit oh in real life we have our mobile phones that we carry around with us it's, it's and we can access the internet cyberspace whenever we want and wow it's the exact same thing except your phone has a tracking device in it that you can't take out <laughs> um <laughs> you know it's that the, that's why cyberpunk is just to utopian and that's why people love it that's why people want to live in a cyberpunk dystopia because it's actually fucking heaven compared to the real world you're, you're allowed to have an authentic rebellion everyone wants that everyone wants that without the baggage just do it do what you can you know the brain implants you think that shit isn't just gonna be with one like it's not gonna be cyberpunk where it's like a cool matrix thing it's gonna be your thoughts are fucking owned by google and sold to a fucking data harvesting company it's gonna be that thing where you have to you know that pattern where you have to stand up 
and yell McDonald's at the TV to skip the ad. It's going to be that. You're going to have ads in your brain. It's all it's going to be. It's going to have ads in your brain and you won't even know they're ads. You, you'll just thought, think they're your own thoughts. It's already happened to you without them even having to interface directly with your brain. What happens when you act, they're interfacing, you know? It, you're already not a means of propaganda. So yeah, cyberpunk is actually utopian fiction. It's um, it's it's that's why people want to live in cyberpunk world. That's why um, it was actually a despite what everyone sort of projected it as this sort of dystopian negative view of the future is actually a really optimistic <laughs> uh, utopian view of how the future might look. Uh, in reality, things are just worse. Isn't it kind of cool to live in like a big, like, you know, to live in an apartment in this, you know, in cyberpunk, you live in a shitty apartment in the city and, uh, you know, you, 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 you got your fucking 12 fucking computers set up in there where you're, you're doing hacking shit in real life you can't afford to pay rent in the city and you can't afford the, the internet and utilities the electricity bill for those computers so you live in the fucking suburbs and you have a laptop you know and your laptop is partially owned by uh, the cia or whatever that's that's the real world compared to cyberpunk that was the appeal of cyberpunk was maybe the future could be cool but it's not cool Maybe it still can be, but it won't look like uh, Ghost in the Shell. It'll look like an airport. I think that's um, who said that. Philosoph was it Philosophy Tube in one of his videos? I have mixed opinions on Philosophy Tube, but I think he made a good point in that video that if you want to see a good view of what future cities will look like, just think about an airport. You know how airports are high security just when you enter an airport you just accept that you're entering a zone where you're you know you're sort of the, the the normal rules don't apply everything's kind of very managed there's incredibly high like surveillance the security guards metal detectors um cameras everywhere everything's orchestrated right everyone's sort of and, and you're just surrounded by these like shops selling overpriced water or whatever um that sort of surveillance attitude and um controlled experience of of uh, the the space of a space um you know designed to make you buy things and to surveil you wherever po as, as much as possible wherever possible um yeah just imagine an airport stretching on forever that's that's what the city that's what cities are gonna look like um yeah not ghost in the show i think i've made my point